Hello, I'm Richard Reed, also known as the HVAC Repair Guy, and uh, today we're going to look at replacing the element on a mini tank electric water heater. Uh, to begin with, you want to shut off the cold water coming into the water heater, and on a larger one, uh, you want to drain the tank if it's got a drain valve. This one doesn't, so turn the tap on for the hot water in your home. Make sure you run out all the hot water. Turn off the breaker at the electrical panel. And uh, here's a little bit of the tools that you're going to need. Just a simple multimeter. You can get these at auto stores. You can get them at hardware stores, all sorts of places. This is a water heater element wrench. And we need a Phillips and a standard screwdriver. And we're going to begin by taking the cover off. Just a simple matter of a couple of screws. But they're little screws, so you got to be careful and not lose them. And once that's off, you'll notice insulation behind the, behind the cover. And you'll notice this plastic uh, protector to protect the electrical connections. That pops off. Then you want to uh, check to make sure the power is in fact off. So set your multimeter for uh, AC voltage and check the power between the black and the white wires. The black wire on the control and the white wire on the element. Also check each one to ground. And we don't have any power to it, which is good. Now we want to verify that the element itself is bad. So turn your multimeter to the lowest uh, resistance setting that you have. In this case it's 200 ohms and go right across the element. Put the one lead on each of the terminals and for a good element it'll be very low amps between 5 and 10 or 5 and 10 ohms. Uh, for the bad one, this one here is more than 200 so it's bad. So we head on to the replacement. Replacement is simply a matter of disconnecting the two wires of it. Take your Phillips screwdriver Loosen the screws and the wires will pop off the terminals. Then take your element removal wrench, fit it over the element, take your big standard screwdriver, stick through the holes in the, in the element removal wrench and turn. That gives you the leverage to get it loose. Once it's broken loose, you can set your tool aside and get out the rest of the way by hand. This is what one looks like and right here you'll see a spot that looks like it's melted. Uh, that's good indication that it is in fact bad. And You'll see the corrosion that's built up on this one. The corrosion is what actually causes it to fail because it can't transfer the heat. Um, but there'll be a part number on it. There'll also be a voltage and a wattage as well as the length. There's also different kinds. This one here is made of copper. You can also get stainless steel elements, which stainless steel are actually better because they don't corrode like this, and so they will last longer. Uh, replacing it is simply a matter of taking the new one, sticking it in, and starting it by hand. Screw it in as far as you can by hand, and then take your element wrench again, put it on, take your standard screwdriver and get her nice and snug. There's a rubber gasket on the back side. You want to make sure that's seated good. Then we want to hook the wires back up. Just simply stick the wire on the terminals and tighten them up with your Phillips screwdriver. You want to make sure they're good and tight. Then you want to put your electrical cover back on and when it goes on right you'll hear a snap. Sometimes they're a little tricky to get where you want them but they will snap into place. Uh, then you take your cover and your insulation, put them in place. And line up your holes. And 
and tighten them up. And then you simply want to turn back on the cold water, let the uh, tank fill back up. You'll hear a uh, lot of noise because it's got to get the air out of the system. Uh, once the tanks fill back up, turn the power back on and you will have hot water again.